Wow. Hello, this is Russell Preston Brown from Adobe, and welcome to another episode of The Russell Brown Show in Maui, Hawaii. In this project, I'm going to create moving water, as you see here in EO Valley. We're going to take the ordinary, as you see here, and make it extraordinary. Wow, let's get started. And it all begins here in Lightroom on my iPhone. I first want to set up an album before I go on my shoot. I'm going to tap here to set up an album. Then I'm going to name the album before I go on the shoot. There's one other thing I want to show you, and it's right here. I'm going to tap on these three dots after I've created the album to set it up so the images are automatically captured into this album. This is really helpful when going on a shoot like this. I select that, and then I go out on the shoot. Here I am, right in the middle of the stream with a really nice sturdy tripod. I've set it up in this way so I can capture two images, a light exposure and a dark exposure. Let's give this a try. Please note, right up here in the upper right hand corner of my iPhone 11 Pro is this icon, which allows me to turn on my live picture mode. And that's critical for capturing water in motion. I turn that on. Then my next step is to tap on the foreground here, in this case, to expose for the water. I'm going to tap and adjust the exposure by moving my finger up and down here on my iPhone to get just the right exposure for the foreground. I'm going to then take a photograph. And then, after I've taken my live photo, I go down here to the lower left of my iPhone and tap on the gallery of images right here. Now here's something you may not have known and it's amazing. If you swipe up here from the gallery, as you see here, you then enter a mode where you can select special effects. The one in particular I'm interested in is long exposure. I'm going to tap on long exposure right over here. Look at that. My water is now smooth and silky and is moving. I have the right exposure and I have the moving water that I want. That's my first photo. My second photo will be a darker version of my exposure. I'm going to tap in the sky, as you see here. Then sliding down, I can make it darker and I can get the sky just the way I want it. I'm once again going to take a picture, a live picture, then go to the lower left hand corner and swipe up again and select long exposure. So I now have two different exposures. They will automatically go into my Lightroom album that I created earlier. So let's next move to Lightroom on my iPad. That's where I do most of my work. Here we are in Lightroom and here's the Eau Valley State Monument album that I created earlier. I'm going to tap on the images, the two different exposures. The first one I'm going to select is my brighter exposure. Check this out. I've already made some adjustments to these images. If I tap and hold on the image, just like this, you can see the before. And then if I let go, I can see the after. I have adjusted the light values for this image. Let's check this out. I toggle down the light values and you can see that I tend to adjust the shadows and whites. Now this is going to be different on your images, but in this case I wanted a nice open shadow within the foreground and I wanted the whites in the water to become much brighter. It really worked well. Also, I'm going down here to effects. I found that clarity and dehaze adjustments really made the water look great. And it's the water that's most important in this exposure because it's for the foreground. Next, I'm going to go over to my darker image here. Once again, I'm going to go through, tap on it to see the before and the after. Let's take a look at the adjustments I made. Under the light values, once again, I've increased the exposure. I've dropped the highlights because I'm now focusing on the clouds 
and the background to this image, and I've opened up the shadows. You'll also note that I waited for this cloud to come along, and I captured this cloud in just the right moment. The cloud is really adding to this photograph, drawing your eye back to the needle here in Iao Valley. Cool. Next, let's move on and let's export both of these images to Adobe Photoshop on my iPad. Here in the upper right hand corner in Lightroom, I'm going to select to export to camera roll as you see here. Then let's render those and send them off to our camera roll, just like that. Next, let's go over to Adobe Photoshop here on the iPad. I'm going to open up my cloud documents, as you see here, and you can see some of my previous projects. Down here in the lower left-hand corner, I'm going to import and open, right down there. I'm going to select my camera roll. That's where I've saved my images. Here are my images. I'm going to tap on one of the exposures. In this case, it's the lighter exposure. Then over here to the left, I'm going to select once again, to add an additional image from the camera roll. And I'm going to select the darker of the two. So I now have the dark exposure and the light exposure. Ah, you're now beginning to understand that I'm going to combine the two exposures together here in Photoshop on my iPad. I'm going to select the darker exposure in my layers over to the right and move it down to the bottom by tapping and dragging. Then you can see the lighter version is on top. I'm going to select it. Then I want to place a mask on the lighter version. I prefer this technique where I mask the lighter version. By selecting this icon to the right, I can then add a mask as you see here. Then I'm going to make sure my foreground color is black as you see here to the left and I'm going to use my bucket tool. Notice I also have that mask layer selected. You can see the blue edge around it. And check this out. If you tap on the screen with the bucket tool, it will automatically fill the mask with black. It's a great way to fill an area quickly here on Photoshop on the iPad. Check this out. We're now going to use our brush tool to paint into this mask right over here. I'm going to select my brush tool here. I'm going to make sure I have just the right soft brush. As you can see here, I've selected the softest possible brush. Next, I'm going to start to paint into the mask. Check it out. I can start to reveal an opening through this mask so that I can see the second brighter layer below. Cool. Here's the mask. You can see how the dark area is holding back the exposure and the light area is letting the exposure come through. I've now shown you how to blend two photos together and you get to paint them together. I really love this process of capturing two exposures and combining them together using this process. So once again, you just saw the ordinary become the extraordinary here on The Russell Brown Show.